right. Here we go. Virgin flight. We're <laughs> speak for yourself. <laughs> uh, Ryan likes to fly Alaskan. Finally made it. It only took us an hour and 47 minutes. Hey everyone, I'm Ryan. And I'm Steve, and this is 60 Cycle Hum, the guitar buying, selling, trading, modding, fixing, working, reviewing, playing podcast. Podcast. <laughs> we is have... that, real, that really only, that really only, oh, what? Yeah, it's, on. On my, it's only on my mic, Steve. We have a, a new podcasting tool here. We have the Tascam Mixcast 4, which Sweetwater sent me to check out so we're trying this thing out figuring out how it works and stuff i'll release a video on it yeah. eventually. all of the things that you've identified like so far it seems i like the colors i like that it's bright the colors what like that's important like yeah it's, the colors it's, are important it's very attractive it lights up no one can see it here i though. know i know i'm just saying like uh the angle could be higher because i i can't tell what time it is and that's bad because i will just go on and on and on yeah um Actually, well, the screen on the on the on the roadcaster is on the other side, right? And it's, oh, and it it's, is. And it's angled. It's, I it's think it's closer to me. That's right. Yeah. Uh, it's just going to be like every time we change topics, I'm going to have to like lean over and be like, "Oh, that's what time it is." <laughs> um, yeah, we're going to have to get used to this. Thing I just want to sure. say some good things about it before you say bad things about it. I don't. Th yeah. The, there's a couple quirks we've run into, but uh, I, I'll, I'll cover I, that all in the video. I really want to think that those are potentially user errors. <laughs> It's possible. I, I might be able to work around them, whatever. They, we'll get to them. Eventually, yeah. I'll cover those things. So anyways... We got a we got a hot debate going on in our topic call out today. Yeah, Gary Turner said, do pedal builders really need to include so much swag? Wouldn't your pedal be cheaper if it just came in a plain brown box? And then Noah Barnett said, should pedal builders include more swag? Wouldn't your pedal be cooler if it came in a magnetic closure box with a MIDI chip that played iron and wine and a quick start guide in 16 languages? So let's talk about case candy. Let's talk about it. Pedal swag and stuff that comes with like your gear when you buy it. I think, you know, like at this point, the stuff that comes with guitars has become pretty normal. Like you're gonna get your tremolo bar if your guitar needs mm -hmm. it. You're gonna get a couple Allen wrenches. You're gonna get a leftover Radio Shack cable. You're gonna get a leftover Radio Shack cable because they made 20 billion of those in the 70s and they're still trying to get rid of them. Uh, and then you're gonna get some silica gel packets and you're gonna get a key for your hard case if you got a hard oh, case yeah. Yeah. With, a, with your new guitar. Uh, if you buy an amp, you're gonna get a power cable mm. and a manual. Maybe a foot switch. Maybe. Maybe a foot switch. Maybe a foot switch. But if you get a pedal, you're going to get a button, a pen, a couple stickers, some guitar picks. You're going to get a little velvet You know bag. what? I got a, cra gonna, I got a might, crate might, amp back in the day. That came with stickers. It might come with like a wooden box or something like that. You know, like there's a lot of stuff that goes into yeah, the packaging yeah. of pedals. And... How much do you think that actually increase, increases the the cost of the pedal? I think it could be significant. It probably. I, mean, I think I, I think at most like, not, like just like, you know, like a printed box mm -hmm. with stickers, picks, a pen, you know that sort of stuff. I'm betting it's under four dollars per per. Well, pedal. I think it depends. So one, I'll say it depends on the pick. Like JHS sure. used to throw in those gravity picks with theirs. That, yeah. that could not have been cheap. And then sometimes you like I've got this walrus pick. Yeah, here, that walrus pick like is a, probably nothing. It's you know. a cheap plastic boy we, here. We we do the uh, we do not the that walrus. You know, is is skimping out on anything, but it's it's not a premium pick. No, what? Yeah. And you know, picks are. And maybe JHS got a discount on gravity. I don't know, but like for picks, people are so. Uh, people are so diehard about picks, I feel like. Yeah. Like a lot of people are. It's one of those things where like this almost makes sense, like the cheap printed pick, because people are so specific in their pick tastes. Yeah. That's like, there's nothing we could send that would make most people happy. So we we'll might as well just send like the thing that represents a pick, you know? Yeah. Instead we, of trying we, to like send a premium option. We got the... Uh, we got our we get our picks the ones that we send out with our swag packs um with from Intune GP 
uh, because they were the manufacturer for a company that a lot of people seem to like their picks. So we got our picks from the same people. Right. Um, nobody seems to really care about our picks. No. <laughs> so apparently Gear Supply we Company not, has won again. We have not made it onto the pick list once, which is it's kind of like, you know, Billboard. Yeah, the, you know, top, top, 40. the top the top picks. We're not on to, we're not on the pick list. No, we're, we're nobody's number one pick. Uh, uh, 60 cycle hum picks are no one's number one pick. I, this all I use really is our own picks. Really? Because really? you know who am I going to give them to? Oh, I use oh. honey picks. So. Oh, okay. All right. Fancy boy just here. Saying. Just saying. What do you do? You think like? I think swag's fun. I want stickers. I think swag is fun and stickers are fun. But would you rather have your hundred fifty dollar pedal? be a hundred and forty seven dollar pedal um uh i don't <laughs> or would you rather sleep a little better at night knowing that the builder got an extra three bucks in their pocket i don't think i would think about it either way um i don't think i've ever bought a pedal because i thought like i really want a sticker from this brand sure or i really want uh whatever from this no brand. it's you don't like no one buys a guitar because they want a case they want the guitar right like no one buys a pedal because they want the stickers they want the pedal but there is i mean a case is really bad example because there's a big functionality to case sure but it's okay so what i'm saying is like i've never looked at two reverb pedals and been like that one that company has a cool sticker Sure. That company has an uncool but sticker. But because it has become the norm, say you're the first person to... Say you buy a pedal from a company, mm -hmm. and normally that company is known for packing their boxes with like cool stickers and picks and pins and stuff yep. like that. So you buy something from them, and there's nothing in there. And you've bought from them before, and you're used to there being a bunch of stuff. There's no announcement. They don't tell anyone, hey, guys, we're pulling back on this stuff just because, you know, we did a poll and found out that it's just, you know, consumer waste or whatever. Um, would you feel bummed out? Because I have a feeling like that is one of the big, big motivations to keep doing it in that there's a fear of lost value if you stop doing it. Like, like Chase there might be, I, I can Chase, say Chase Bliss had to do like emails yeah. and stuff like that and a full on video about moving away from the wooden boxes. And people just, still freaked out. It became too much to keep hand producing the wooden boxes. They were, they weren't hand producing them, but they were hand staining them and yeah. stamping them. They were buying the boxes produced and then doing all this hand work with them. And it just became too much. And you know, that definitely adds cost to a product. And it was coming out of their bottom end. Well, I, I think they're out of their bottom end, huh? <laughs> uh, I think they're. I think that's one of the things where I've had conversations with people where they talk about uh, the problem with scaling and how mm -hmm. when you're small scale, you kind of make everything on your own timelines, and maybe you're a little more expensive, or you're you're ordering so many, ordering so few units that. The per unit cost is just kind of like you factor that into your your cost. But as you move up, the expectation is at some point, at some number, you're getting a discounted rate. So like with stickers, right? If we order 50, right. 50 stickers, it's going to be, I don't know, like 10 bucks for 50 stickers, right? But if we order... 5,000 stickers. I mean, these are all made up numbers. It's, it's not, that's not the correct number, but the, the example is, I, I, the I example think, is true. Well, so like if, I, if, you know, order like, in, if you order in bulk, like stickers essentially become free. Yeah. If you <laughs> order like a, a, well, I know like, cause we use sticker mule. Are we still using sticker? Yeah. Mule? Yeah. We use sticker mule yeah. and they run deals every once in a while that are like, uh, was it like, 20, I think it's usually like $29 for 50 stickers. Right. Or is right. It, and but I know I'm pretty sure on their site, like if you instead of buying 50 stickers, you're buying 500, you're always going to get that $29 well, price, and it's probably even going to be cheaper. These manufacturers, they're not buying 500, they're not buying a thousand. They're probably buying oh, for sure buying like five thousand, sure. ten thousand. So, so you know, if you if you're a company like Boss, you're ordering two hundred thousand stickers. Yeah, so my like my that, you point know? being though is like with the wooden box for Chase Bliss. That's probably an item that may, whoever they, was making those 
maybe could have given them a small discount, but certainly not like the bulk rate discount that you would normally see for like a mass produced I think item. They were just ordering them off of Amazon or something. Oh, I really? Think they just buy those boxes. You, so it was just a labor thing. No, it's totally because they were they were. I I don't remember the story exactly, but I think it was Joel's dad. Oh, was hand was just staining them. Was hand staining them and hand branding all of them, mm. and that was the real labor cost, and it just became too much. It was just time, too time. They couldn't yeah. keep up with the right. With the order. Because the boxes are probably like whatever. They're probably like two bucks a piece if you yeah. order them in bulk or whatever, which is, you know, it's it's a significant cost to add to a pedal, but mm-hmm, it's not mm-hmm. it's not, you know, like incredibly ridiculous or something like that. And people really liked the boxes, but the labor cost and the time cost of it was was becoming too much. For the amount of pedals that they were selling, they couldn't keep up. So and like, would you rather have to wait for your pedal to be sent to you because they're waiting on a box? For a month, no, I'd, I'd rather just have the pedal. Would you rather just have the pedal? You know, but then other people would go like, "Well, that box, I know, I went on Amazon and I saw that box for X dollars. So if you're not sending me the box, then you should take, you should sell your pedals for ten dollars less or whatever." I they, they could have kept. It's silly. They could sell the pe- the the boxes. They could sell the boxes. Yeah. Like, hey, they don't all come with boxes now, but if you really want a box, it's, a, it's an upgrade. You know, uh, you know, uh. Father Corte, I don't know his dad's name. I don't even know if it was his dad doing it. Uh, Daddy Corte will come out of box stain retirement and make you one for 20 bucks a pop. <laughs> What's your favorite swag that you've gotten from like a pedal? Ooh, that's a good question. Or what's your favorite, I get maybe favorite swag or favorite, favorite kind of swag? You know, I don't have like, like a cool denim vest that I keep them on or anything like that. But I actually really like collecting all the various little like pens that I've mm-hmm. gotten from the brands over the years. I've got a, a car, I've got a a cork thing in my office that I just shove them all in. Oh, cool! And it's a fun like little memory board. Yeah. Of like pens I've picked up from Nam and that have come with with boxes and pedals and things like that. That's a really good idea. I want one of those in my office now. Steve's so high on he's going to have an office. He's maybe it'll be next month. Maybe it'll actually my workbench already has a, a cork board there. There you go. There you go. I can put my, uh, can put my uh, cat riding a unicorn <laughs> but like, on there. I almost, I feel like I like the pens better because mm. they are on display in my office where like stickers is like, oh, cool sticker. I'm an adult. I won't put stickers on things, but I like to look at them and I like to know they're there. So they just end up in a drawer or a box or something yeah. like that. Or I keep them with the pedal box because I'm like, oh, I want to make sure this stays in there for the ne- when, I, mm. when I sell mm-hmm. it or whatever. Mm-hmm. But a pen, that gets me. Like an enamel pen, I'm like, yeah, I want to keep that. Even though I'm not going to wear it or anything like that, I can display it right. and, and look at it. And it's a physical object that is fun in a way, you know? I started covering a water bottle with stickers at home. Uh, one of those big, like, 40-ounce yeah, yeah. metal bottles. So I re- I like stickers. Um, pens pens are fine. The one that, the one again, this kind of, I mentioned this earlier, like, the one that I don't have any real use for is is picks. Because you don't like because picks. because I have like a handful of picks that I like and I just haven't. It's not like I dislike them. It's just like oh cool, it's a pick. It's a sure. It's a basic pick. But I guess like I I don't know. Is it basic? Is it pick, a successful marketing tool? Basic picks for basic pitches, right? That's a callback to something we said like two yeah, episodes ago. Yeah, it didn't really work. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, I I think this all thought of as marketing tools and all thought of as like ways to sweeten up like mm-hmm. the, the user experience. Like I you know, like I mean a classic example of sweetening up the consumer experience is Sweetwater's candy. They don't have to give you candy. Yeah. It costs yeah. them money to do that. Technically, if they stopped giving everyone candy, it would they could save make another money. like five cents per no, sale. They they could they could knock some money off the top, and everything could be a little bit cheaper. They could probably fire one guy f- from the fa- from the warehouse whose job it is is to put candy in your package. I've seen the candy operation there, and you're going to go there, Steve. Steve's going to come go to Sweetwater there. with with me in, in June. Um, it's a lot of candy. <laughs> <laughs> It's like a lot of candy they're dealing with so over there. So you're saying it's a two-man job. Um, but what I'm going to say is like the reason why they do candy and the reason why you see bowls of candy out is say like a real estate office or a bank or things like that 
is because there's a very primal thing of giving someone a sweet where your brain is like, oh, I'm happy here. Oh, this is a good place. Oh, oh I'm gosh. getting a treat. And it's it's like opening up the box of the thing that you ordered. And it's like, yay, the thing I ordered. Yay, candy. And the candy just like doubles that experience in some way. And it makes you associate like a positive experience with this retail experience that you're having. It's not dissimilar to the extra things that come in the box when you get a pedal. So or what? A so what I'm hearing app. is, uh, the purpose of candy is so when I go to the bank, I, I go in there, I pop that peppermint disc. Mm -hmm. They call me over and they go, "Sir, uh, you are four payments behind on your credit card," and I go, mm, "But it's so minty." <laughs> You know, I really like being here. Yeah. I don't feel so oh. bothered being here. Oh, okay. That's no, cool. No, it probably does. You know, think about this. Like, you go to the bank. You're already fe feeling aggravated because you have to be at the bank. Mm -hmm. Maybe your blood sugar is low because you've been running around doing errands and stuff like that. That little bit of candy gives you oh, that little yeah. bit of blood yeah. sugar boost. And it makes your experience a little bit better for a few minutes, maybe. And that's all it takes to make it feel like it's a more positive experience. You know, like, this, you know, I'm not saying that, I mean, I don't know, like, Pedal builders put candy in there. I'll, I'll eat it. <laughs> My kids will eat it. But it's that sort of like connection of like, oh, there's something extra here. I'm getting right. something more than what I ordered. I ordered something. I've been anticipating it. And maybe a week has gone by and maybe, you know, my excitement has gone down. Now I open it like, oh, stuff mm -hmm. I wasn't expecting. Like I, there's some sort of psychology there, like retail psychol psychology that makes it make sense. I get why they do it. How do you feel about like, but is there a case to stop doing it? Yeah. Waste. Consumer waste. Consumer waste. The um, cost, you know, well, is the cost it, significant? Like if, if it, if the cost isn't significant, then I, you know, I guess there's not like necessarily you, a reason for the, 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 the manufacturer to stop doing assuming it. Assuming everything is in such bulk that everything is essentially like pennies to have mm -hmm. produced. Let's assume all that swag in a box is worth about 50 cents. Would you rather have the product you purchased be 50 cents cheaper? I'm asking you, the viewer right now, the commenter, would you rather have your pedal be 50 cents cheaper? Assuming they ordered all those stickers and pens and keychains or whatever in bulk and it got it down to that cost. Or is there a dollar amount where you're like, just give me a no swag discount. I want just the pedal, unprinted box. Don't even put the velvet bag in there or the canvas bag or whatever. Mm -hmm. I just want the pedal maybe wrapped in a little bit of cheap bubble wrap to keep it safe. Not even the the shredded. No, not even shredded, shredded tissue uh, paper. Uh, paper. What's the? The crinkle cut paper. Crinkle, crinkle yeah. cut paper. Not even that. Just going to go like this for the next hour. The accordion paper. Um, like what dollar value? would push it over the top. You're like, that's all that stuff is $3. Just don't charge me $3 and keep all that stuff. Or is it higher? You know, like, I mean, imagine if you, if you did that and you were buying, like you were just really into pedals and you're buying like 50 pedals a year, you just saved $150. That's a lot of pedals to buy in a year. That's one a week. I mean, people do it. People get hot on the hobby and they start buying stuff real, real fast. Yeah which is wild to me whenever I hear about people doing that, like people buying multiple multiple guitars in the same month or multiple amps or a pack of pedals, a stack of pedals or whatever. Because I've always been like one or two pedals a year, one guitar every two years type of yeah. purchaser. I'm not talking about what I do as my living doing demos. I'm talking purchaser. Like I still buy like probably one guitar every two I was years. turning, I felt like I was turning over stuff pretty quick for a while, but I was also like turning it over. So I was buying. You were doing like the flip game. I was game. buying and selling. Yeah. Buying, selling, trading, fixing, modding, breaking, reviewing, and playing. Um, Did we do the intro? Uh, I don't remember. Um, <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> oh, boy. So let us know what your favorite swag is, yeah. I guess. And builders. Tell, I know builders tell us you're wrong. Tell, tell me I'm wrong about this pick thing. Maybe all of your picks. Maybe you've never bought a pick. You've only bought pedals. I want to. I want to hear your story. I want to. I want a few builders to chime into the comment section and tell us what it costs to pack pedal boxes with swag. Like, what is the per pedal swag cost? I'm talking the printed box. 
I'm talking the little bag the pedal's in. I'm talking picks, stickers, keychains, whatever else is in there. Manuals as well. A lot of companies are skipping on manuals now and just saying, hey, go to the website because printing costs are a cost. Would you rather have a paper manual or would you rather go to a website? Mm -hmm. I mean, what if someday the internet's just gone? You won't know how to work your pedal anymore. Talk about design op designed obsolescence. <laughs> what if someday electricity doesn't exist anymore? Yeah, they're gonna use that pedal. Then, it's like they planned it all along. Yeah. Now you got to buy a, a a diesel powered pedal <laughs> for using in the post apocalypse wasteland. I'm not ready for that future. Are you? Oh, I am. Oh, you are. Okay, good. <laughs> Let's move on. What are you what are we doing now? An ad? Oh. Housekeeping time. You ask and you shall receive. We asked for a housekeeping jingle and we got it. If anyone wants to send us a new one, we'll cycle them in and out. We'll have a couple of them maybe. Uh, we could probably have jingles for we can have jingles for all kinds of stuff. All kinds of stuff. We could have it for what's new. Yeah, we can have it for like, you could have a jingle for an ad. Let's do an ad. Jingle. Ad jingle. That one was sent by... Um, we, could have ad, we could have jingles for topics, like topic time or something. I'm trying to find the email for the person who sent that. It's going to be hard because I already Tom, opened it. Tommy Alamo. There we go. That. Tommy Alamo. Thank you. I really like that one. I think we're going to... I think we should keep it until... It's chill. You can play it again. It's relaxing. Housekeeping time. It's got a Mr. Rogers vibe that I and, deeply appreciate. Anyway, housekeeping is the part of the show where we take a moment to thank the people who support the show. Uh, you can support the show over at patreon.com slash 60 cycle humcast, where for as little as a dollar a month, you can keep us in the green and keep us making this content like these fine folks have at the $10 level, Matt Kaufman. And at the $1 level, Darren Logan. Keeping us in the green isn't an incorrect way to say that. People know what you're saying, but traditionally the line is keep us in the black. Because like if oh, you're in the yeah. black, that's profits. If you're in the red, then you're in debt. But I like the sound of keep, it, keep us in the green. I guess like you don't want to be in the green because then it just sounds like you're pocketing it all. And... Right, right. No, we, we use... We're building up a nest egg. Actually, for what it's worth, we need to get significantly into the green so we can do another run of 50-50s. Uh, that's not what's Maybe. holding us up. Me being lazy with the oh. art is what's holding that up. So I'm so sorry. I, I've I got been saying enough. that for like a year. It's longer than that. It's been so long. And I'm so... The person I feel bad for the most is Leon over at Pelican Noiseworks because he's just sitting on circuit boards and I haven't done anything. Is he really? Yeah. I'm sorry, Leon. Oh, man. <laughs> It's bad. It's bad. Uh, my intention is eventually I'm going to come with, uh, with up with art, and I'm just going to give him permission. Just like turn this into a production thing. Just keep making them. Like don't stop. Like if you want to make them, sell them, then make them. Um, so, so people peer pressure me into making the art for the new fifty fifty pedal. And right. the best way to peer pressure Ryan is to join the Patreon at the one dollar <laughs> level. I mean the one hundred dollar level. <laughs> How about the three thousand dollar level, yeah. Steve? <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. But do pressure Ryan. Leave rude and nasty comments about how terrible a person he is for not finishing I this graphic I am design. a terrible person. It's awful. I just need to make a new picture of a popsicle. That's all this is waiting on. All I have to do is make a new picture of a popsicle. My 12-year-old uh, is designing the cover for her school's yearbook. So when she's done with that, I can have her drop, I bet a, it's gonna be sick. To drop a popsicle for you. She, she's good. She's good. It's very floofy with flowers and stuff. She was showing it to me. She's like, she showed it to me and there's a part in the middle that just said text here. <laughs> I'm like, huh, is that where the, the name of your school goes? She's like, yeah. so yeah, anyways, Patreon helps us fund a lot of the programming around here to sound like PBS. It pays to keep the lights on. It pays to handle our all our hosting for the podcast and stuff like that. It pays for camera costs, equipment costs. It pays for food costs. When we meet up to do the podcast, it means that no one has to cook and prepare a meal because we're busy, you know, working on doing this stuff and my family doesn't have to worry about cooking and whatnot. Um, so it really does make the show possible in a lot of ways. And we're very thankful to everyone who contributes in any dollar amount from a single dollar all the way up to three 
$3,000. If you want to pay us $3,000, I'll hang out with you for a week in downtown San Diego. <laughs> oh, I get the joke. Okay. All right. Uh, let's do an ad. It's a. It's not a joke. <laughs> it's let's not do a... an ad. Uh, this is. Uh, this was sent by Grant. This is a Squire Precision Bass Electric Bass Guitar. Grant Wilson from yep. one of our sponsors. Yep. Uh, uh, item is in pedal. use condition. Da, 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 da. Oh, this is from I think Goodwill. Uh, the bridge is in functional condition. The nut is intact and in functional condition. All tuning pegs function properly. The neck is securely attached to the body. The, is that a is finally that a finally a guitar where the neck is securely attached to the body? Uh, please note large body route under the pickups. If any cracks gaps are visible in the instrument, it will be noted in the description. Uh, cosmetic issues include scuff, grime, dents, dings, chips, chunks missing, finish peeling off, and scratches and marks consistent with regular use. No! <laughs> no, not at all. And the action at the 12th fret is approximately the uh, so the height of the torch if you put a sideways cent bicentennial quarter you know, the standard the unit of measurement. <laughs> Let's get an uncommon quarter to measure this, please. Um, this is a squire too, so this was um That action looks fine, right? Like yeah, for, it looks good. for a base, that's it looks fine. Pretty good. Yeah, it's decent. Uh, but like what the, the the let's not bury the lead. The notable thing here is that a giant chunk of wood in between the pickups and the bridge has been chiseled out in some sort of way so that the circuit board from a Digitech pedal? This is a Digitech, I believe, FX50B. Is that a, is that a Digitech or a Dodd? I'm going to guess Digitech. Based on the size of the circuit board, I'm guessing Digitech. And I think that is the delay, but I'm it not It is sure. made in USA. I, I oh, was the FX50B is the DoD Overdrive Plus. Oh, that's right. Wow. Now I like it a lot better, but not enough to justify this. Oh, man. I, I cannot I mean, tell the, from looking at this if it's actually wired in. That, the plus is it's it's actually not my it's actually not a 50-50 circuit that I like because it's not really 50-50. It sounds more like a two-screamer to me every time I've tried one. Oh, but that's wild. Oh, how silly. But the FX50 is supposed to be a 250? Uh, it's supposed to be from the same lineage, same family, but it's, it sounds different. Um, man, why did they route it into the front and where's the knobs? I don't know. I, it makes me think that they just routed it in there for fun. They're like, Here's it would a, make more sense. Cause I don't see any way that it's connected. There's to also anything. only two. Well, there are two knobs and those two knobs are the knobs from the actual pedal. Yeah, but the, I'm pretty sure those are the knobs just for the volume and the and the tone for the guitar. Oh, we haven't even mentioned this giant spermy whale hand cut pick guard that's been painted with what I assume is permanent marker. Is that what it's supposed to be? I thought it was supposed to be some kind of demented penguin. It's kind of like a stretched out yin yang, half of a yin yang sort of thing. It's a yin or a yang. It's not a yin and a yang. Because it's both white and black. It's just a yin yang. <laughs> I don't know. Like, it's... They took off the original pick guard. Mm -hmm. Or they cut up the original no, they, pick guard. Yeah, probably cut up. Then they hollowed out a chunk of wood to put the circuit board from an overdrive pedal. That just looks like it's there, not actually plugged and, in. And then on top of all that... The paint is flaking in major chunks. A lot of it hasn't fallen away, but you can tell, like, if you picked at that with, with your finger, you could pull off, like, a chunk of paint that's a good couple inches long. Yeah, this neck is legitimately gross. Like, Oh, super. The whole thing is super gross. Like, it I, just, if like... If you wanted to clean this neck... Um, so, for my necks, I usually use, like, an old uh, gift card, something like that an old like a spare credit card or something to get to in scrape between it. to scrape it oh, this man, is like nasty. this is like maybe you could use 
I've seen. I actually took my one of my ba- bases. It's kind years of ago. bust out the pressure washer with this. Thing. Yeah, it's th- not that bad, but it's it's pretty bad. Well, I've seen guys use like razor blades. This is like you need a full on paint chisel. This is a chemical job. You need <laughs> to bring in a chemical to uh, get rid of that grease. Grab your CLR. <laughs> Gra- let's let's get Billy Mays on the case here. <laughs> You got to slap chop this neck. Uh, that's not Billy Mays. I know. That's the other guy. <laughs> yeah, this is gross. What what did they want for this? I don't think there's a price on it. It's on Goodwill, current, right? Current price. Current price. Minimum bid is $57. The current price is 56. Yeah. So with there's three been- with 3 days to go. Look, man. It has 9 bids on it. This is a Squire Precision base and you get a free DOD FX50B with it. You just have to put it into a case and rewire it up with pots and Re- knobs and, and switches. Do all and those other things. You have to do a lot of stuff. But it's free. I mean, a lot of this is cosmetic. This could, if you could get this for what the current price is locally, so you're not paying shipping. Right. Say it. Say it's seventy five bucks. Say this is seventy five bucks. You see it at the local Goodwill. Do you buy it? Um, I'm not talking about bidding situation. I'm saying it's got a tag on it. You say yes. I I think I'll buy this. Would you buy it? Yeah. For seventy five bucks. Yeah. I feel like for seventy five bucks, I feel like you could get this. Get pretty close to this base unmolested. You think so? Like think about let's, the base that you and Adam. I don't actually go, don't actually know which one of you owned it. Let's, Adam owned it. That, that you had a Squire Affinity. That base sucked, man. But that's basically what this is, isn't it? No, this is that was an Affinity. What is this? This is a Squire 2. This is, oh. this is probably... So uh, that's a little bit of vintage appeal to it. But look, the nut's going to need work. They, they're jamming toilet paper in the nut slots and stuff like that. That's just because they're stupid. Uh, it's probably buzzing. The strings are probably... Sure. Yeah, it needs a, it needs a recut nut. You're going to if this was $75, it's going to be just over $100 until you're done working on it just to get it normal. Look, it needs a new thing for the tuner. Like it's missing one of the things. Uh, it's going to need new strings. You're going to be 150 to $200 into this project before you you're happy so? with it. That yeah. High? All right. Because you're going to want to you're going to want a fresh pick guard for it. You're going to want to figure out something to cover up that hole unless you like double down and commit to the the uh, the DoD FX50. Mm-hmm. Like honestly, if it was done well, like clean up that route, put a little like frame around it and like a plexiglass cover and an LED in there, make it look intentional, and it could be honestly a cool look. I'm trying to figure out which year uh, Squire Two this. I mean, is. just this. <laughs> The way things Which is are now these making days, me think that this isn't actually a Squire Two. With the money that you would spend making this something that you would want to play, you could just buy a new Squire P base. Yeah, you could just buy it. Like I think the bids are already too high. I think that the max that I'd be willing to throw at this is like forty bucks, and that's just out of curiosity. You know, and then I would be still be aware, like, oh, I'm going to throw 100, 150 bucks into turning this into a project. It is a project starter, you know. I'm I am more and more confused by this. I'm going through ads on Reverb, um, and I'm more and more a little confused by the fact that I can't find this headstock. So, which is like, I can't imagine you would slap a like slap together a fake Squire too. No, it's it's. But, it might be a parts guitar. It might be a a limited run or you know a rare run or something like that. Like here's a similar one, but it's a, the similar one doesn't have that one's been molested too. Uh, yeah, that one that one's had some extra paint added on. Uh, but this one doesn't have the truss rod, right? So that's weird. There's like did this person a did bunch some, of variations going on? But that one also sold for three hundred dollars. Jeez. Or at least it was listed for $300 and it sold for some amount. Hmm. Yeah, I'm 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 sticking by my guns 40 bucks. Yeah, here's another gold logo, but again, it's a gold logo that does no not No skunk stripe on that one. Um, does this one have a skunk stripe? Yeah, I'm pretty sure. 
Yeah, it does. Interesting. All these little details that we get hung up on for no reason. Like, who And cares? this one's a gold. It's got the same string retainer, but it also does not have an exposed truss rod. Right. Weird. That and this truss rod and does this, look different. And the gold squire is made in India, so... Hmm. Interesting. All right, man. Maybe you're right. Maybe you're right. I am open. I mean, maybe there's nine people have bid on it so far, so maybe there's something about this that we don't understand. Maybe there is some magic. I think it's just on good, Goodwill, so people don't really. I don't know. Grant. I think Grant can get some good deals off of Goodwill because it's less trafficked. Maybe. But jeez, this isn't one of them, Grant. Stay away. The paint is bad. Like the 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 circuit board thing is compelling, but done poorly. Wait, you think the paint is bad? What gives you that idea? Because it's flaking off. Uh, that's called checking. That's not checking. This is a vintage base, Ryan. What did you expect? There, listen. There's like oranges that you kind of have to peel them and stuff, and that's normal. Like, okay, sometimes a little, like a little skin peels off, whatever. A little paint peels off. This is one of those tangerines where the tangerine is rolling around loose inside the skin. <laughs> You know, like this paint is ready to fall off. All right. So the guitar. Uh, this is an aside. I went over uh, this past weekend uh, to, I went to get a haircut that failed. Uh, because, Your haircut failed? Yeah. Apparently Christina canceled my appointment, but didn't tell me until I was uh -oh. driving up there. But we were going to go visit my father-in-law afterwards anyway. And so we went to his, uh, his friend's house and her friend's, my, my daughter's running around. She goes in all the rooms. And so I'm like trying to pull her out of the rooms. And one of the rooms she went into, I think, is is the this woman, her son's room. And he had a bunch of musical instruments in there. And uh, one of them was a Martin acoustic. And the other one was like some kind of Les Paul thing. And I was looking. I was like, oh, that's, that's interesting. That's obviously not a Les Paul. What is it? And I pull it back. And it's an old like, it's a bolt-on neck, but it's an old Ibanez oh. from like the seventies or whatever. Like an old lawsuit Ibanez. Yeah, huh? like that kind of era. But it was I don't know if it's because it's like spent its entire life in Carlsbad or what, but like the pickups were green. Yeah. Did, like fully. I was always under the impression that he lives really coastal. Yeah, this was at Carlsbad uh west of the five where we were at. Right, right. So yeah, you are in that ocean spray area where the the seawater is affecting yeah. everything in your house. This is probably like a block or two from block block or two east of the train tracks. Right, right. So you, yeah. You got an idea where that's No, at. totally. It, on on a big surf day and the wind's blowing a little bit, your house is getting wet with ocean water. <laughs> that's how that's how close he pra is. Practically pretty much, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so that all that to say is like, yeah, the the checking on here the, is that's what made me think of that. Sure, sure, sure. I want to see. The, did you post pictures of that Ibanez? No, Do you have pictures no, of it? It's, it's it's like my father in law's, I guess, girlfriend's son's instrument who oh, wasn't okay. even there. So gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, I I, I thought about I it. I want to see I this like, thing. I was like, eh, I don't I don't know if I want to. Sure, sure. <laughs> You know what's not awkward, Ryan? What's not awkward, Steve? Chase Bliss Audio, the sponsor of the show. That's that's correct, Steve. They make pedals more creative than you are. I'm grabbing. Just like the blooper and, and the, the mood. mood. Yeah, that's right. I was waiting to see what you were grabbing. The blooper and the mood. I've got reverb I can use. Man, they, that reverb needs tails. I know. I wonder if there's an option to turn that on. The blooper and the mood. So I have to hold it down and let it stop ringing out. You know what would be better, Ryan? What? Is if you put the blooper and the mood like in your mic path. Yeah. And then you just turned them on and then you this, turn them on and off when you're done. The the Tascam Mixcast 4 needs an effects loop is what it needs. Oh, maybe it does. I, yeah, there, actually, there are some additional... We uh, should, ports on the back. Some, Steve, we should honestly set up a vocal pedal board for podcasting. <laughs> Let's do That's it. That's not a bad idea. We just need some kind of con way to convert from like like That's XLR to quarter and then back. Yeah, but I don't want to do it jank. Why are we talking about this? So anyways, I was going to try to grab... 
Uh, could you grab the habit for me? I can grab the habit. All right. I was going to try to grab the habit so we could show the trilogy of freaky, loopy delay pedals here. The mood, the blooper, and the habit. I call it the knobs trilo trilogy because why wouldn't you? These are all very knobs. It's because of, is it because there's so many knobs on them? It's, there's so many knobs on them. I'm not not because there's a YouTube channel called Knobs. Like you know that would never be it. But if you're looking to get freaky, to get loopy, to have delays like you've never heard before or loops like you've never heard before, research these bad boys because they deliver the trilogy. You want to try all three, right? Get get six of them. Get two each so you can run them in stereo. <laughs> A huge thanks to Chase Bliss Audio for once again supporting this nonsense. Year after year, they keep supporting us, and we appreciate it. So if you're feeling like splurging on yourself, Christmas, anniversary, Father's Day's coming up, you want to treat yourself for Father's Day, or treat a father in your life for Father's Day, consider getting them or yourself a Chase Bliss pedal. Just to say thank you to them for supporting this content that you appreciate Year in and year out for some reason. <laughs> All right, is it time to open letters? Let's say let's let's ask Ryan. Ask me what's new. What's new, Steve? Give me that knife. I got a new pedal. I bought a new pedal. You bought this pedal. I bought this pedal. We've got two other packages here that are people just sending us stuff. Oh, here's my tag from UPS. One of them might be West. One of them is from Wesley's. Oh, Wesley Morris. I thought I said Wesley's mom. I was like, this is from one. Josh Smith at Roscoe's House of Blues. And this one is from Wesley's Moms. You were right. No, it's a, I'm pretty sure it's what is it not Morris? No, it is Wesley Morris. <laughs> but the two R's look like and connected with the I look like a mom. Look like look like look like an M. So Wesley Moms. Got some good ASMR content. Here we go. Guys. Yeah, get those tinglies. All right. I was told that this is just an Instagram pedal, that I don't need it, that I'm just getting it because it'll look good on Instagram. Well, don't waste any time, Steve. Put it on Instagram right now. This oh, is that the does white look good. collaboration devices. Oh, uh, compressor. It does not have a name. It's just called compressor. You got number twenty three. Number twenty three. Let me see that thing. Look at that. That is attractive. It's got a little compressor uh, dial thing there. One sticker. Uh oh, swag count. Two sticker. It's got comp level, makeup, comp blend, and saturation. Gain and compression switch. Yeah. Interesting uh, layout of the jacks right here. I haven't seen quite that layout before. That's fun. It, it, Very cool. They wrote, thanks, Steve, on the box. Yeah. That's for you. That's you. You're Steve. That's me. Yep. Uh, this is made by a, a good friend of the show, a good old friend of the show, yes. Patrick Chen. It was his brainchild, and I believe they're actually uh, manufactured by QSAC. That's his brain baby? But this is Patrick's brain baby, and this is his collaboration device. He collaborated with, with some other people to get this done. There you go. So this is a this was a project that, in my opinion, is a, was a long time coming. This is actually the second, I think, run, or at least the first white run mm. of these. So I'm very excited, even though I don't actually know how compression works. Now, which one of these do you want to tackle, Steve? By the way, we are wearing shirts that were sent to us. Oh last yeah, episode. let's talk about that. Let's talk about that. So two, I think it was two weeks ago. Or was it last week? I don't know. I think it was last week. We got these shirts. I'm not a printed t-shirt guy. Mm. Uh, I am, and I'm a like big loose t-shirt guy. I'm a V-neck guy most of the time. So I think when we got these shirts, first of all, I was excited to get shirts. And then I saw the shirts and I was a little bit bummed because I know like the kind of stuff that I'm into for like day to day wear. And then I realized I real actually I realized while re recording, but it was too late that we were kind of being dicks about it. Oh, um, no, I think I here's here was my thought process on it. What's your thought process? Because I thought we were kind of being dicks about it. I opened up the Viking shirt and I had a flood of complicated emotions. Because I used to be really into Viking stuff. Mm. Because, I mean, mm -hmm, this. Mm -hmm. Have you seen this? Th like, I'm gesturing to my face, audio podcast listeners. Um, and then, like, all that got spoiled by freaking racists because they spoil everything. Like, all right. The, How, like, runes are, like, secret yeah. code for, for, like, white supremacy. White supremacists started, like, like taking on all this like Viking and Celtic imagery. Yeah. And maybe they had so, always done it and I, I, I didn't know about it, but I found out about it and I was like, man, this kind of ruins 
the fun I've been having. Yeah. So, so like enjoying Viking themed stuff. So I, I had a complication, a complicated flood of emotions looking at it. And I think that came out as yeah. disappointment. So this or, is this is what we want to do. Is I, I was thinking about this afterwards. And then also like like that was it's clearly like Oh, that was meant for me, and this one's meant for Steve. If you're not aware, Steve is. Uh, I don't know if it's really meant. I think they're just cool shirts that someone cool found and wanted to send us. I don't think there was necessarily I made any connection there. I made connections of racial connotations, yeah. and maybe um, that's the darkness in my own head. So, so this is what we want to do: is we don't want you guys to feel like you can't send us shirts. We're gonna start a bin that's just gonna live in here. That's gonna be podcast shirts. Shirts that you guys have sent us. And I've said before, I will wear every single shirt that is sent yeah. to me as long as it's not like horrendously offensive. You know, you can, you can figure it out. You yeah. Use common yeah. sense, you know, like, but if it fits, I'll wear it. And Steve yeah. will do the same thing and we'll wear them every and, podcast and we'll keep episode. a We'll keep a pile. Uh, I, I would say probably we need to probably get up into like the at least six shirts until we commit to. Wearing, wearing every single shirts episode. every single episode. Mm. Otherwise, we're going to be wearing these shirts for the rest of the year, which I I do like the variety of shirts. I'm going to say I don't think yellow is a good color on me. It might be a good color and on me. We'll also, fi- maybe we'll find out also, next time. Also, it feels a bit weird putting on a shirt that's got... It made me feel self-conscious about my body looking into the camera and putting on a shirt that's got a picture of Bruce <laughs> Bruce Lee on it. Like legendary. Stop, make it, stop making this complicated. Legendary in-fit guy. And here I am. It's like, oh, this yellow shirt really shows off every role, doesn't it? <laughs> hey, just, just because Bruce Lee had an eight-pack and you drank an eight-pack last night... <laughs> Does it mean you can't wear Man, this t-shirt? I've never drank an eight pack in a night. Are you kidding me? Do they even sell eight packs? I, I don't think so. I I don't want to talk about this. <laughs> we'll wear whatever shirts you send. Let's open these boxes. Yeah. Just don't, you know, obviously be reasonable. Don't send us paraphernalia that. Yeah. Yeah. Be, be decent human beings about it, but we'll wear any shirt that you say. And they can be funny, you know? You want to open that at the you same time? You want to open both of these? So, yeah, let's get so through them. Who, that's from John John Smith, Josh Smith. This is from Josh Smith. This is from Wesley Morris. Uh, in Lawton, Oklahoma. There is a lot in the, going on here. What do we have here? This says Schaller, the original innovators. Oh, what is what do we have here? We've got a Stone Cloud Brewing Company sticker, a String Joy sticker, and then there's this tag. I haven't checked what's under it yet, but it says, "I bet you could run 14s on a Jazzmaster with this girl." No. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa! Oh my! Oh my gosh! <laughs> Look at the spring. <laughs> oh no, I can't I could get a little bit of budge. Oh, that is a ridiculous spring. I, <laughs> I bet I could run a kit I could run a set of strings that start with a 56. <laughs> you know? <laughs> you use this on like a 12 string bass tremolo with this. This is ridiculous. This is ridiculous. This is a tremolo spring for a harp. Are you kidding me? Is that what me? it is? Yeah, yeah. Have you seen a harp with a tremolo, Steve? I'm I making a I don't joke. Know, maybe. All right. This says tone plug. Thank you for purchasing a handmade custom pedal. Get ready to plug into some great tone. I use nothing but top quality parts in my pedals and hand make each one in limited small batches uh, to keep them consistent. I use fine gold. Electrolytics and Wema box caps, new old, new old stock Motorola op amps, and new old stock Soviet diodes. Full size pots. It's quality over quantity. The tone plug is a vintage design pedal. It's not true bypass. It will add tone to the rest of your pedals in your pedal chain using the knobs. It uh, will to, add tone to adjust to your taste. More tone is what you're telling me. Uh, if you plug 
more than nine volts into it, it will damage the pedal. So don't do that. Tone plug works well as a clean boost and overdrive or even tube streamer type tones. Plug it, plug into your tone with the tone plug. Enjoy and thanks for your purchase. Any questions or concerns, email me. So this is called a tone plug. I think there was some communication back and forth uh, with uh, this guy, Douglas. Steve, what's it called? Is it called the tone plug? It's called the tone plug. All right, I've added a sticker to the cyclone. Which sticker did you add? Uh, the Stone Cloud Brewing Company. Whoa, oh, look at that cool. thing. Check out this big old plug in. Oh, the motto is plug in, turn on, tune out. This is a big old. That's a beast of a pedal. Big old pedal. This looks great. I like this art. Is this us? I think this is us. That's totally us, Steve. Look, uh, who else could that be but us? <laughs> it's got like a graffiti thing going on. Gain, treble, and volts. I'm going to have to plug this thing in. Very cool. Thanks, Wesley. I mean, obviously, I'm going to have to plug it in, but like, I want to open it up and see why it's so big. It feels light. I have a feeling it's... Oh, I think the case is just pretty light. I think the... Jeez. That's a That's big rad. boy. That looks cool. <laughs> Thank you for sending that. That's some exciting stuff, guys. I'm going to have to put the springs... I, I want to like spray paint it gold and turn it into an award or something like that. <laughs> I've been talking. like It would be fun to have trophies to hand out at Nam. Maybe this is the direction to go. Like just big old springs. Big old spring. You are the you are the you like YouTube's greatest resource of spring reverb. I guess that's not incorrect. So yeah. Let us know where we can get more giant springs. I know where I can get more giant springs, the internet, but like <laughs> what else do I do with this? <laughs> I'm gonna put it on 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 one of the Princeton's behind me. My little collection of knickknacks is growing. Are you there. ready to hit this ad? Uh, yeah. Let's hit an ad. Which this was one sent was by this? Andrew Adkins. I just dropped my pen. That's bad. Oh, this is that rare Fender neck. It's a rare Fender neck. And I think I solved where it, where it came from with the first picture in there. Let me oh, know. Oh, that's you why that picture's there. If you think I'm correct. Old rare Fender guitar neck, thirteen hundred or best offer. Potential buyers only. Yeah, that, I mean... I think it's an old Coronado neck. And it, the details don't line up perfectly with the one I found. But the later Coronados had uh, block inlays. But this one has dot inlays. But this example I found has a painted black headstock where this has a natural headstock. But it has the same shape. It has a lot of the same details. I think that's what it is. And it has that exposed uh, truss rod at the heel. Does it? This one doesn't. Oh. Maybe it, maybe it does. Maybe it's, it's like, internal. Maybe you can only access it if you pop the pickup out. I think you have to pop it. I, I think you have to pop the neck out to this access it. This one's a little shorter, too, because this neck is a... Um, maybe I'm wrong. It's actually... 3, 5, 7, 9, 12, 15, 17. There's only 19 frets. Oh, wow, yeah. So maybe it is something else. So what, what if it's only mean? 19 frets, it makes me think of like an old Fender, like new Porter. Yeah, you might be right on that. And that would make more sense for that truss adjustment could because that would be inside of an acoustic. Was a new Porter the old one or like that? Whatever the old, those old I Fender. I think it was the new port. New port. Acoustic. Well, they have new, new, new ports. Yeah, that's the problem. So you're going to have to search for vintage. Uh, search for like. Like 68 new porters, something like that. I'm going to look for Fender Vintage Acoustic. Let's see so they want, up. this thing is in fairly, it doesn't look like it's in unplayable shape, but it's in not new shape. We'll say that most of the logo is missing. Plenty of relicking going on on the headstock here. Um, it looks like it, I don't know, the nut might be fine. Uh, it's missing the the little metal. I always forget the, what those little metal rings are called that go around the tuners. It's either missing them or never had them. Uh, it just looks like it could use quite a bit of love. Uh, it looks like it needs a... Oh my gosh, it needs a refret. I've never seen frets worn that deeply. Yeah, that, that, doesn't, that doesn't fret. look too bad. <laughs> I've... That is, I don't know, I think that's extreme in my book. 
I, this thing has been played. To get that much wear on the first fret, it means that this neck is a player because someone played it a yeah, lot. Yeah, look at this. That's it. This is an old Newport neck. That's it. That's you figured it it's out. It's even. It's even only this has 19 frets. You're right. No, you're totally right. It's an old acoustic Newporter neck. Everyone who wants to know why I'm here, that's why I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> oh man so that makes it things even harder this is not worth a thousand dollars because 68 new porters aren't worth a thousand dollars how can you how but even if it was how would you put it in anything well you have to it's, custom, a, it's a bolt-on neck you'd have to custom build a body that it would fit though because it's just put on stratocaster the, the scale's gonna be all wrong just put on Stratocaster. The scale's going to be wrong, Steve. It's Whatever. not going to work. It's rock and roll, baby. You're not going to be able to intonate it. It's just rock and roll. I mean, roll. it needs a refret. You could have whoever refrets it move the frets. <laughs> I mean, I guess like as much as I'm like ranting about it, like $1,100 is full on. Wait, how much are they asking? No, yeah, 1300 or best offer is full on wrong. There's one on reverb right now, but the one on reverb... Is five hundred dollars. Well, this screen grab says one oh thir down so for thirteen. Marked down. They want they want one thousand fifty for it, but like, what what are you seeing full blown Newports for? This one's a little different, but I'm saying that. like there's a sixty eight on reverb for five hundred dollars. The whole body. No, just the neck. Oh, just the neck. But what else, what do you put this in? Once you get it, what do you do? I don't know. Well, like you'd have to really be a Newport lover and have like a like a project that yeah. you need this for. And it's like at that point, like you are one of two people in the country, in the world maybe, that are working on a Newporter project. No, there the val there's just there's no this this isn't worth it. I mean, technically it's a nineteen sixties fender neck. Sure. So in theory it's worth something i think i think the 500 600 mark on reverb is probably fair you know what they made these for oh that's different though yeah that's different steve's looking steve's going down rabbit trails dead air everyone loves dead air on a podcast <laughs> I just, I just like this thing bums me out. It looks like it's, it's like, it got played. It's worn out in the right way that like it looks pretty cool. It makes me wonder what happened to the body. It got played so much. What happened to the rest the of the body? It? Just disintegrated under the weight of all that grime. <laughs> Maybe. I, I'm not gonna buy it. I'll say that. But I, I could see someone, I could see someone paying five hundred, maybe six hundred for for it. this one in this condition. I think because we're seeing that they all seem to have different neck heels and slightly different details. If you've got a body mm -hmm. and you're trying to find a neck for it and like every other neck just has like kind of a random wrong thing going on and you're trying to find the perfect one. If this is the perfect one for your project, right? then you get it. You're going to get it because you're going to pay for the perfect one for your project, right. you know? So I think that's right. my take on it. So 500, 600, it sounds like a lot, but in terms of restoring a vintage Fender, like I think that's doable. We're like a thousand and up for this. That's like collector's quality. Like if this was pristine, I would get it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I would, I wouldn't buy it, but I would understand it. Right. You know right. what I mean? Right. And that's the thing is, I feel like the pricing here. I shouldn't put this string joy on this. Where somebody's just saying like, oh, this is a vintage, rare Fender neck. And they're just assuming because it's an old fender neck that it must be worth, which is not an at least a thousand dollars. An incorrect assumption to make that if you find a 1960s fender neck that it's going to be worth some amount of money. That's not an incorrect assumption at all. But it has to be something that people actually these, these, have a use for. These tuners don't even match. One of them has the plastic key, and the rest of them have metal keys. Right. It's been replaced. Yeah, it's not stock anymore. Yeah, you know, we don't have that the, the the right tuners on there. No, 
It's no, not. Now it's worthless. Never opened. Still in box. <laughs> someone would someone would buy this and then they would spend a hundred dollars getting the correct tuner if they actually needed this neck. You know, they would they or someone who buys this probably has a drawer full of vintage Fender tuners because there's some restorer or something like that that's trying to work on a very specific project for a client or something mm-hmm. like that. That would be my guess. The the target market for this. All right, let's do the next ad. You know who probably isn't the target market for this, Ryan? Who? Grant and Karen over at Big Ear Pedals, the other sponsor of this show. I think I have them all over there. That's right, Steve. Big Ear Pedals, once again, supporting this podcast for some reason. They're good friends of ours. We love them. They love us. We're all in love. There's the Albie. It's named after their cat, Albert. It's a really cool curated multi-effect that means you don't get to get into like sub menus and things like that and make your own patches the patches are already made you select them with the selector wheel one of eight there's actually like two banks on here so 16 different effects or you can ramp in between those two banks of effects by holding the foot switch depending on what mode you put it in it's a cool pedal you've also got the wood cutter here it's named after paul bunyan it's named after paul bunyan the biggest wood cutter of them all this is honestly my favorite rat style pedal in the world. So if you want my opinion on which rat pedal to buy, it's this one, it's the woodcutter. So huge thanks to Bigger Pedals. Go check out their stuff with the link in the description. Follow them on social media so you know what's going on over there and you can buy stuff as soon as it becomes available. Yeah, I saw, I saw that they out. were uh, back in building, building phase, so. They're building again. They're building, baby. All right, last ad. Yeah, this last ad was sent by, oh, it was sent by my wife. My wife sent me this and said, you should put this on the show. I wanted to say my wife in uh, the Borat voice, but it's not my wife. It's your wife. Yeah, it's so, my wife. Your your wife. My, my wife. Your right. wife. This is actually from Zillow Gone Wild. Guitar pool alert. $750,000 in Atlantis, Florida. Four bedroom, three bath. I don't really care about this house. It's it's a house. Who cares about the house? Let's talk about that pool, yeah, baby. It's got an acoustic guitar shaped pool with a Florentine cutaway. <laughs> no, that's a Venetian cutaway. That's a Venetian cutaway. <laughs> it's got like the full on like tile on the bottom to look like a sound hole and strings. So this I screen grabbed a couple interior shots of the house. And there is there is one room that has three guitars in it, which I don't feel is enough guitars to justify having a guitar shaped pool. Especially in when it's two G and L's, right? And a Taylor. Yeah. And one of them's a bass. Yeah. Like clearly, like three guitars means like this is a guitarist's house. But I feel like if you have a guitar shaped pool, you need more than three guitars. You're like a you're like a fifty guitar person like you've got 50 guitars yeah so uh the 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 overall design of this is just i still think the strings are in there because it's designed to be a lap pool. no there's no way yeah this is a lap pool no. where you're just shooting down the neck no it's too narrow the neck is too narrow steve you look at that tile on the side you would clip your elbows and be bleeding you just gotta you gotta keep it all tight you just gotta keep I admire what they were trying to do here, like trying to go for a full guitar shape and including the neck. It's too small. You think it would be better if they just wouldn't have included the neck? I think, I, I don't think they needed to include the neck. I you think, think they, it would be better if they just would have had a rectangular pool? I think they would have been better to, it's the backyard, I think it would have been better to have a lima bean shaped pool. <laughs> Like everyone else in the world. <laughs> I think that's honestly, I look at the neck on mm-hmm. this pool mm-hmm. and all I see is a tripping hazard. All I see is someone not paying attention and falling in there. And right. then like, because it's not very wide, they're not only falling into a pool, they're catching their face on the other side of the pool. Like they're falling in and severely hurting themselves not just getting wet like i this the it's the worried dad part of me that's looking at this and it's like no no i don't like this this makes me feel very uncomfortable is as a pool the, is this the pool that the island boys are in pools don't make good guitar i mean guitars don't make good pool shapes guys look ryan if you were to get a rectangle pool and claim that it's a bow diddly guitar oh i was just about to ask you 
If you had to pick a guitar shape for a pool, what would it be? Oh, literally, a like, rectangle. Sounds like you already answered it. The classic Utah. Well, you want like some contour, so maybe you go with the uh, the Gretsch uh, Billy Bow. Mo- sort of maybe. mostly rectangular, but it's got some contour. How about one of those Fernandez battery guitars? That's basically a kidney bean shape. Mm-hmm. Uh, how about like a Vox Phantom? It's kind of round. But don't include the necks, guys. Don't include the necks. If you want to indicate a neck, then put in like a bench there or something. I don't know. What What about, about a strip of grass leading to it that looks like a neck? What I, about a Fender or what about a Gibson Explorer? Tile work leading up to the pool. Make that the neck of the guitar. Uh, what about a Flying V? No, it's too thin in places. You're gonna have the same problem as this neck. You're gonna, you're Can gonna you fall. Imagine? In, you're Can gonna you... fall in the pool in the middle of the night, walking through the yard to like pick up some toy that was left in the yard, or find your dog or whatever. You're gonna fall in, and you're gonna, you're gonna curb stomp yourself on the other side of the pool. Jeez. Can you imagine a flying V guitar? You're just like, where's the deep end? You're like, oh, it's down the V. <laughs> Like you can be in the same side of a pool as the, of the pool as someone, but like be completely separated by not pool area. That's actually kind of neat. I feel like a Telecaster body would be a decent pool shape. Mm. I do like what they did here with the the Florentine cutaway, the lower horn cutaway, where that's the stairs to get in and out. Right. That's what that's called, right? You called it the Florentine. Is that I, correct? I thought it was a Ven- well, Venetian's Venetian? a little more extreme. I don't it's know. probably more like a Florentine. But I do like that. That is the stairs. That is practical. And like, if that had been an area that just normal depth of the pool, I mean, like, what is that even for? You're going to tuck your body into there. But making that the right. stairs makes sense. Right. All right, Ryan. How much would you pay for this house? <laughs> I don't know anything about the area, but I'm assuming in in this market, houses just sell for what people ask. Yeah, apparently, yeah. it doesn't matter. It, the numbers are all made up at this point, right? What's and fun- you just bought a house? You know what I'm talking yeah. about. Yeah, no, that's too true. <laughs> all right, you ready to get out of here? Uh, well, let, yeah, like the. I, yeah, I am. I was going to say the rest of the house looks fine. It looks like a nice place no, to live. No, this isn't a housing podcast. No one cares about the rest of the house. It looks good. It looks like a great house. Like, buy the house, guys. Go live in that house. I don't know. All right. This uh, this song was sent by Mike Sanderson. He may or may not be related to the Sanderson sisters. We can't really say. I don't, I'm don't. i not familiar with the Sanderson sisters. From Hocus Pocus. Oh. Uh, okay. He said, Hey, up, Stephen Ryan. Greetings from sunny Leeds, West Yorkshire, UK. Longtime follower of the show. You guys, along with the general group, helped me through some of the darker COVID times with humor, crap gear, guitars, and good tunes. So thank you for that. I thought I'd send in a track I've been working on recently. The vocal is kind of buried in the mix, but that's kind of how I like it. Shoegazy psychedelia track which i hope you and the 60 cycle fam will enjoy and he's uh, there will be a link below to more music i'm already interested you're already interested wait on me yes
I dug that. Yeah, that was cool. A shoegazy mixed with uh, like the ghastly ones, kind of a yeah. dark, spooky, surfy oh. sort of thing mixed in. Also, I cracked this thing open while we're listening, and there's more stuff going on here than I thought there would be. I was honestly expecting like, you know, like one of those twelve component fuzz sort of looks. Ah, but there's actually quite a bit going on in there. The double pot on the uh, on the gain control here, so something fancy pants is happening there. A double stack pot in there. I want to try this thing. I'm looking forward to it. So anyways, bye everyone. Stay grounded.